Friends, welcome to Imperial Beach, California, just at the edge of a military installation where they are doing touch and goes with helicopters. Helicopters, people! But we're not here for helicopters. We're here for a Hyundai, um, which is still cool because it's a 2017 Hyundai Elantra. You know, I get very confused about this because it just turned 2016. We're already on 2017. Anyway, 2017 Hyundai Elantra, totally new. So while we work on the full episode at the end of the runway with the helicopters, why don't you and I go through a tech review and let's start where we always start, the engine. Okay, so before we get to the engine, I gotta point out it's not just helicopters that are doing things over there. This guy is doing low, slow flight in a military fighter. You know, it's, it's probably like an F-18 or something like that. This is like, this is basically Navy town around here. So <laughs> I know it's cool to look at new cars, but I love me airplanes, especially military airplanes. Anyway, let's get back to engines. Um, so I have a general rule of thumb here on the show where I don't like to point out things that you guys can see, which is like design stuff. Yeah, I'm going to point out details that you don't see, but this, you probably see some of the lines of the current Sonata here in this car. Uh, well, there's some other things that they've pilfered from the current Sonata here, and that's really two engines. So the current Elantra or the previous Elantra had really one engine. Now there are two on offer. There is a two liter four cylinder, uh, normally aspirated, and then there is a 1.4 turbo four on offer. Let's start with this one. This is the two liter engine. Uh, this one puts out 147 horsepower, which comes in at a relatively high engine speed of 6,200 RPM. Uh, then it's got 132 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at also relatively high engine speed of 4,500 RPM. Now, let's put this one off to the side for a minute. Let's quickly talk about that 1.4 turbo. That one's exactly the opposite. It's 128 horsepower, which comes in at a relatively high 5,500 RPM, but 156 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is coming from a 1.4 turbo, which comes in at a really low 1,400 RPM, stays flat all the way to 3,700 RPM. Now, that's going to be in a coming eco model. We are driving this one in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back uh, so we can talk about this one as we drive it. But there's something special about this engine. Uh, did you guys ever see that Lexus RX episode, the hybrid episode of driving that car? We spent a lot of time talking about different cycles. And I don't mean bicycles, I mean the difference between auto cycle engines, which are typical internal combustion engines, and then Atkinson cycle engines. Now, Atkinson cycle engines are pretty much what you get when you buy a hybrid, whether it's a Toyota, a Hyundai, a Honda, whatever it is. Um, but generally, you don't see Atkinson cycle engines in normal single propulsion system cars. Well, Hyundai has taken the decision to go with an Atkinson cycle here. But the general difference between an Atkinson cycle and an auto cycle engine is the duration or difference in the duration between the expansion stroke and the compression stroke. So in the case of an Atkinson cycle, it is a shorter compression stroke and a longer expansion stroke. And the general idea is to tune the engine for more efficiency. Now, back in the day when there was an Atkinson, this was accomplished through a very complex crankshaft. Well, now it's more through technology and some other changes here, like this actually has an integrated cylinder head and an integrated exhaust manifold. Um, but really, now we need to focus on some of the bits that affect driving dynamics, because as big of a change as there is here, there's more elsewhere. Okay, so as we move off to driving dynamics here, take a look, we got two helicopters that are taking off in some sort of formation over here. This, I mean, guys, I'm 25 hours into a private pilot's license. This is like totally my jam here. Granted, airplanes, not helicopters, but I love helicopters too. I'm thinking maybe I could trade these guys, like give them the 2017 Hyundai Elantra. I mean, hell, it's not my car. Give it to them and they'll let me take one of these things for a ride. I think that's what we should do. But before we give them the car, let's finish driving dynamics. And I think we need to press on and start back here. And here, well, this has been my biggest bone of contention with Hyundais over the year. Actually, a little asterisk on that one. Every Hyundai except for the current Genesis. Do you remember we did the episode with Matthew Becker, then of Lotus, now of Aston Martin? He tuned 
the suspension on the current Genesis, which makes that car not just value, that car is a damn fun car to drive because it was tuned by a guy from Lotus who his dad was the chief engineer of Lotus for many years and worked for Colin Chapman. But again, I digress, let's get back to Hyundais. Hyundais like this, Elantras, Sonatas, that kind of stuff, they are more value. You know, you get a lot of, of, of stuff in there for your money, like heated rear seats in this case. And you, you know, I've said this over the years, how do they pay for the heated rear seats and stuff like that? Well, they pull it from places like this, the engineering in the rear suspension. So where like a Mazda 3 or maybe even like the Ford Focus has a lot of engineering that goes into a finely tuned independent rear suspension, this one independent, but it's more torsion beam than it is the detail of what's underneath a Mazda 3. Well, obviously someone at Hyundai has been listening to us complain about this because there are a number of changes back here. It still has the general basic design, but what they've done is they've taken the damper and instead of it being on the inside or inboard of the car, it's actually closer to the wheel well and closer to the actual wheel itself. So it actually has more control over the movement of the wheel and the damper itself, like the old one was like this tall, the current one or this one here is like this tall. Now obviously we can't spend a lot of time talking about how this translates to driving dynamics until the full first drive review episode, so make sure you come back for that. There is an embargo so I can't even tell you about it, even though I've driven this car for a couple of minutes and do have some sort of an insight here. Anyway, let's press on. Now, there is changes back here, which is great, which I'm very excited for, but there's also some changes here, 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 and here. So Hyundai, I'll be very honest with you guys, Hyundai is a car company that scares the crap out of other car companies because they do things like they make their own steel, really. Like this car, it's being manufactured in two places. It's being manufactured in Alabama as well as Korea. Well, in Korea, they have their own steel plant. Uh, so that gives them the advantage of being able to put more high strength steel in a lower priced vehicle like this because they manufacture it. So where the previous car was 21% high strength steel, which frankly is more expensive than regular types of steel, uh, now it's 53% high strength steel. So the idea, it's a stiffer vehicle. And again, that's gonna have an impact on the driving dynamics. Make sure you come back to the full first drive review episode to find out more about that and how it affects driving dynamics. Then, so you've got more steel. Physically, you also have a bigger vehicle. So it's actually an inch wider and almost an inch longer, but it still stays in the C car or compact car segment. Now that is the biggest changes from the outside beside design. Let's focus on some of the changes on the inside. Now the theme of pilfering from its big brother continues on the inside, and I mean design here. Uh, if you saw our 2015 Hyundai Sonata first drive review episode, you know we spent a lot of time talking about design. And frankly, back in 2010, uh, when Hyundai brought out the 2011 Sonata, no one really took Hyundai seriously. But in 2015, when they introduced the current Sonata, and now 2016, people take Hyundai much more seriously because it's a known quantity. So Hyundai is now competing with the likes of Toyota and Ford, as opposed to people who are, you know, for lack of a better term, credit criminals. Um, and the reality is that has now kind of made its way down to the Elantra where it is a more mature design, especially on the inside here. Uh, so that's why they've kind of taken the design from the Sonata. Now there's other things they've taken from the Sonata and that's like technology. This one has like blind spot warning, lane departure, that kind of stuff. It even has steerable headlights in an Elantra, very cool. But frankly, the thing that people are gonna be looking for on a car like this is stuff like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I am an Apple guy, so I have connected this to the system. And really, Hyundai was kind of the first one here, one of the first ones. Ferrari was the absolute first with Apple CarPlay. Hyundai was the first with Android Auto. But in this application, they're actually doing both. So if you get the limited model, it comes with an eight inch screen here, and it's actually from the factory, it's both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So if you have like a house divided, like you're an Android guy and your wife's more of an Apple girl, 
you guys don't fight about that stuff. And speaking of fighting, there's even like uh, dual temperature controls too. But anyway, I digress here. So the, uh, the integration is very similar to what we saw in that Hyundai Sonata, where once you go from the Apple CarPlay menu, you can go back to the Hyundai UX, and that shows you the navigation. So you can use the navigation from your phone, or you can use the navigation that's in the car itself. And I did speak to some of the folks at Hyundai uh, with this system, you don't necessarily have to have the navigation from Hyundai in the Elantra. In the Sonata you do, but not in this version. This is a later version of the system, so this, frankly, okay. is the killer app. Okay, this is a Hyundai. Granted, I've set up my phone to do the British thing, so it's kind of weird that I have a British woman talking to me in a Korean car, but you get the idea. Anyway, I think that's about all the tech stuff here. Now we kind of need to focus on really design again because that's really important because Hyundai is the one that proved design is what sells cars. So as we come back outside, the formations with the helicopters are still going, but now they're actually coming in for a landing. So that will give me an opportunity to go over there and see if I can make this trade, really. Uh, so let's try to wrap this up. And with that, I need to leave you guys with a question. One of the things we didn't cover here is this is one of the most competitive segments of car in the world. Forget about just the US, the world, the C segment car. Because think about what this car competes with. It's cars like the Ford Focus, the Chevrolet Cruze, the Toyota Corolla, things like that. Um, but the reality is the last time there was a lot of change was when the previous generation of this car came out, which was 2011. Now here we are in 2016, everything is lining up for 2017 model year cars. And that leaves us with a totally new competitive set. Because think about it, we just saw the new Civic, Chevrolet showed us the new Cruze, but then just in Detroit, like a month ago, actually this month, they showed us the Cruze hatchback. Then, of course, there's the Mazda 3, which was like only about a year and a half, two years old. Yeah, there's the Focus, but that car has been around for a long time. And even with the, the, the nose job they just recently did, it's still an old design. So my question to you is this. Put aside all the tech we just talked about. Put aside steel, Atkinson cycle, all that kind of stuff. Just from a design perspective, which car would you choose? The new Elantra, the Mazda 3, the new Cruze, the new Honda, or perhaps a car that I'm forgetting to even mention here. And don't just tell me which one you would choose, tell me why you would choose it, and for good measure, let me know what car you currently drive. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you guys with two things. Number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application, which I had a hand in designing. You can download it for free at Google Play or Apple iTunes. Uh, and number two, make sure you come back for our full first drive review of the 2017 Hyundai Elantra from Imperial Beach, California. And hopefully, I can get my ass in a helicopter. With that, bis später.